Okay, I had commented on doing this earlier, and what, this is a two-part, it's going to start a series, and then this is just the video where we explain what to buy if you have no idea what you want to buy. So, what I'm going to show is just stuff like, I don't want to do research, I just want to make 500, what the hell do I buy, whatever. We have that, and then something exciting is... I was talking to my buddy Mark, who owns the Camaros, and he bought a 2500 pickup truck. I know I posted videos of it on the dyno and tuning it, and we had said we were going to turbo it, and just, of course, for fun. That's like one of the best platforms, in my opinion. You just buy it. It has the LS engine, computer, like all the good stuff, 4 l 80 e just smash a turbo in it and a cam, make tons of power, call it a day. So what we're going to do here is, I asked on Sloppy just for fun. You know, I said, brainstorming with Mark, this is going to be what I'm telling you to buy in this video. We're going to buy, put it on Mark's 2500 pickup truck and show you how it goes. So you'll get to see, you know, how it all works. So I tell you to get the stuff and we show you the stuff and it works. Amazing, right? Uh, had generated quite a bit of interest, almost a thousand likes and uh, like 200 comments. People were like, yes, absolutely do this. So... Anyway, I made this funny little PowerPoint quick, and it says, you know, what turbo stuff should I buy? This is at least what I would recommend currently for 2017, and I'll explain why. You know, a guide for the person who doesn't care, just wants burnouts. Plenty of people are like, I need a thousand horsepower when they don't. So, this is the ground floor, as we're going to assume. This is for a 4.8 to 6 liter junkyard LS motor, and I would say that most people, if you have no idea what your goal is, 500 tire is more than you're going to know what to do with. In fact, you're probably going to be turning it down. If you have no idea what your goal wants to be and you don't know what a lot of horsepower is, 500 tire through an auto is massive. It's a massive amount of power. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that until they can burn their tires from like 80 mile an hour roll. Then they're like, wow, this is way more than I expected. Anyway, uh, other assumptions are... You have no idea, you just want it to sound cool and do burnouts, you know, and then we're going to assume you already have the motor installed. So, really quick, we'll highlight over fuel system stuff, and I would say here, if, if you're swapping into an older car that was carbed, see, that there's a lot of dependencies here, but I can just quickly say, if you want an external pump, go with the AEM380, I'll show on the next page. If it's an internal pump, you can hang the pump on the basket, whatever, go with the internal Walboro 450. So I would say if you have an older car and it has like pencil feed and return lines, you can just replace the feed line, as it says here, with like 3 8 and you can do push lock. If there's nothing like that in your area, you can just buy fuel injection hose. Absolutely buy fuel injection hose. Uh, regular fuel hose, like fuel line, is very low pressure and fuel injection, it'll just expand and blow up and be shitty. So make sure you get, uh, like, it's usually Gates R rated or something at the end, 304R. There's plenty of things you can look up. Uh, you know, we'll try to link some and just get fuel injection rated hose, high pressure fuel hose. And then I would say just run 3.8s. 3.8s is a little bit overkill for 500 tire, but it's easy size to get. It's economical, affordable. You can buy it in a huge roll. And if you have no fuel lines in the car at all, you can use it as feed and return. What I would recommend is you replace your feed with the 3 8 hose and you use the stock, if it's steel and it's not leaking, use the stock feed for your return. And then use the AEM 380, that's a beast. It'll gravity feed, it'll suction through. Like a, a lot of mechanically pumped cars have just uh, the pickup sticking down into the gas tank. You can just cut that and AEM will draw it out. Uh, it's not obviously perfect in a lot of situations, but it does work really well. We have done it in many situations, no problem. And then I would say, again, we'll go to internal pump, buy a Walboro 450. And uh, they are on eBay and a bunch of other places. Let's show you quick. You can get them. I get them on eBay. This guy, in between $100 and $130 with install kit. A bunch of really highly rated sellers. I bought 40, 50 of these or more, and they work great. They're awesome. They will do easily 700 tire. And then this is the AEM 
380 LPH pump. It's 150 bucks on like Amazon and a lot of other places. I think some people have said if you price chase, you can get it for cheaper, but I just worry about you buying something that's a piece of shit and not an actual AEM pump. So those are the two pumps. And then I would recommend running fresh wiring. If it's a newer car, uh, the stock wiring might be okay. But understand that this these two pumps will draw like 18 amps continuous on high duty and they will fucking string cheese wires and fuses and the other part of it is uh, that is feeding the fuel for your motor and even if it's okay and doesn't pop fuses you're getting voltage drop. So if you just run a good fucking wire you'll have good voltage, good amperage, good amount of fuel flow because you might have 12, 14 volts in the engine bay but at the end of your 16 foot shit skinny wire you have like nine volts at your pump and when you're running out of fuel you'll know why anyway that's what you got to do and then yes here fuel system continued i show the a, a kit with the walboro 450 and the aem some of you have returnless rails uh that's fine you can install a regulator in the engine bay and then regulate it and then feed the returnless that's what i do on the ls1 style intake that stuff's well documented. If not, you can ask on the sloppy page and look it up. And otherwise, I would recommend if you can swap. If you have like a cable intake and you don't have return rails, just install return rails or just install an older Gen 3 intake with return. It's way easier. Then you can just clip on the stock clips and everything. I have the stock clip connectors and everything, and I'm going to make a thousand tires soon. All of that shit stock. Stock fuel rail, stock feed, stock clip, stock return. It's ridiculous. So if you can do that, just try to do that when you buy the motor and get return everything or swap it on. It's cheap shit. The intakes are worth nothing. I have like three of them packed up there right now just from motors. So do that. And then I, yeah, I say you can swap and return everything else. And then for injectors, I would say your best bet right now for cheap and getting it done for 500 tire is decapping the stock truck injectors. There's a lot of that going on right now, very popular uh, topic on a bunch of things, and they work. They flat out will go from like 25 pounds to approximately 75 pounds. Plenty of fuel for 500 tire. You can even send them into Eric Durr and have, or any other place, and then flow them, and you can make sure that they're all pretty close or not totally dirty. If you have a really dirty engine and everything's really crummy, you might want to consider that. Otherwise, if you have no idea what to do or you don't have injectors or you're, you don't want to fuck with that at all, you don't want to touch them, buy Siemens DECA 80s. And what's cool is you can get those from EFI Source or VS Racing. Again, like when you call Varen and buy most of this shit, 90% of this stuff is going to come from Varen. You can get 80 pounders through Varen. So just buy those, put it on your list. And then I would say you should definitely... People can do 500 tire with the stock cam. Uh, the stock springs, if they have a lot of miles on them, are going to blow open. I mean, people have done it. But yes, you want to make 500. So this will guarantee it. A decent camshaft and a decent spring. So I would recommend the pack 1218s. And they go in between 150 and 200 bucks. They've been going up. I think I call this the sloppy tax. They used to be about 145 bucks shipped. You can still find them for that if you hunt and pick. But it looks like a couple places have started selling them around 200, 175. And then the other thing I would buy is I would go straight to this. We call it the Sloppy Stage 2 camshaft. Just get this. It's only 290 at Jegs. So every now and then it goes down on sale to like 245. You can just keep your eyes open if you're just spending your time building it. Save 50 bucks. They also do military discount. Everyone is like, I don't care about a cam, and then they hear this cam, and they're like, fuck, I wish I just bought that cam. So if you're doing springs, you might as well throw this fucking cam in. It sounds awesome. It works good on motor or turbo. So you could get this rolling, get it tuned on motor, add the turbo later if you're just doing everything in stages. It will work for both. It's awesome. It sounds awesome. It works good with the turbo. It cruises nice. It works with the springs good. Everything. So just get that stuff. Then... What you're going to want to do is get turbo wastegate and intercooler from Varen. And now this is where you got to get creative. He, he sells a Denma Matt Happel VS Racing kit. If you look here, he's done it for years because so many people would ask about it. But I would have you modify this slightly. You can still get pick and choose what you want. Talk to Varen about it. This turbo, the GT45 that comes with it, is physically large and has 
a non-standard outlet and inlet and there's some stuff you got to mess with there it is for sure the cheapest turbo but in my opinion what you should do is get the 7875 from him that's what you want 7875 and then get the two and a half or three inch intercooler kit it doesn't matter for 500 horsepower whatever fits in your car easier he's giving away the three inch upgrade for free you can talk to him if you have most of the time it's just horizontal feed in return horizontal flow intercooler you can get vertical ones i have a vertical one on here it costs a little bit more you can mix and match that for if your front ends finicky and then what you're going to want to do is get his wastegate if you're building a divided setup you need two wastegates so just get two of them they're very cheap they work great i have one on here I've built on them on a bunch of the cars and get that stuff set up he sells a blow-off valve with the kit you can tell him you don't want it uh that's fine too it comes with some of this stuff for oil feed in return and then anything else you can think of that you see in here you can see if he can get a hold of it too he's very resourceful he moves a lot of product not a lot is on his website he's not a very he's not like driven by the whole website thing and just forcing advertising he does most of his best business like when you call him or word of mouth or see what he can get a hold of uh, he doesn't have time to com like update the website all day long he's a one-man wrecking crew so you're going to want to get a modified denma kit also i like the 7875 because it's smaller physically the footprint is small the v-band outlet is three inch for the exhaust that's small and nice and easy and cheap to buy v-bands for the outlet on the turbo is two and a half very easy to clamp onto with the two and a half inch piping kit the other one's like three and a half you have to get like adapter and step down fittings and it just starts to get it starts to be annoying trust me you spend a little bit more on the turbo and get a little less aggravation and less more room in your engine bay and everything else so now we'll move on to ecu and map sensors yeah i mean it doesn't matter what you're going to do if you're going to use stock ecu or mega squirt just get the three bar map sensor you can get one from varen you can get one from efi source those are my bros and then what i would recommend is if you're buying some sort of stock harness or the gold box harness that comes with the newer style plug you're gonna want to make sure you get the right one make it easy on yourself yeah i mean here's one of them like this is the stock style connector this is a stock truck map sensor but it has this new style connector and now i don't think i have an old brick i do this is an old style three bar map sensor some like grand national guys and other people might recognize this shit but it has a totally different connector on it so if you're gonna mess with this you just gotta let them know and get one or the other if you don't know what to get get the ls1 style it'll plug directly into most newer stuff and then also there's a big thing between what ecu should i get and that's like a personal preference thing and i've highlighted all of the reasons why you should choose what you should choose on the sloppy page there is a wiki article that says should i use stock ecu or mega squirt and you should be able to use that and help yourself figure out what the hell you want to do down here is a pl1 stock computer and a ms3 gold box and then what i recommend is buying a log manifold from anybody like i have a friend who builds them his name is joey Fowler. if you are in the tri-state area like new jersey pa area he sells these and then trick performance makes one that's very similar kb racing makes a kit that's very similar uh, any one of those guys if you can fit this do a little bit of research if you can fit this log manifold this will make your day you can just jam it in there set the turbo on it spark plugs are all accessible if the turbo clears the hood line like this is a kb style manifold my buddy Corey johnson made it but i mean that's just majority of the time where it sits nice so it fits in trucks and cars and people like Novas that have a tricky front end. It fits in nice also. So, And then the other thing I would do is if you can't fit this, you should buy something like this that Monkey Fab sells. And this is like a merger kit. And you can buy it in T4 or T6. The 7875 is T4, so you should buy the T4. And you can build this yourself. And I would use 2-inch or 2.5-inch exhaust tubing. You can buy hot rod exhaust kits off of, like, Summit or Jags easily. Look them up and get the piping you need. And then install it. It doesn't matter the 2-inch or 2.5 or 190. It doesn't matter. 500 horsepower, easy goal for any of those sizes. Just use what fits. 
Uh, if you put three inch piping in your entire engine bay and, it, and it's hard to fit, that's your fault. <laughs> if you spent more trying to buy 190 instead of two inch, that's your fault. Just make an economical decision. Don't be an idiot about it. Uh, weigh in all those factors if you weren't thinking about them before. But throw together your kit, hang the turbo, everything else, and then you're done. Basically, those are the key components you need. That's it. Other than the car and how everything is going to fit and your engine management, that's all you need. Those are the core products to make 500 horsepower very easily. You should have no problem cranking it out reliably. I mean, as long as your motor isn't a turd and everything else. Then we have an extra credit round here, and this is trans converter gears. People ask this stuff all the time. And I said, this is the last section, and people are always like, what trans, what rear gear, and what converter should I get? And they get hung up on this, and they can't finish the car. It's so difficult. Uh, I feel like whatever you have or whatever your situation is will answer these questions for you. If you want overdrive, obviously, you need 4L80E. Nothing really has overdrive unless you buy, like, people will argue, and they'll be like, you can get the, what do they use in Drag Week? The overdrive unit. No, that's not a practical solution. It's like three grand. So people can build a car for less than that. And then uh, an ADE is incredible. You can get them as low as $100, up to $800. They're still worth that, in my opinion. The almost the, I mean, I have an entirely stock 4L ADE with an HD2, like most of an HD2 trans kit installed in this thing. Beast. We never have problems with them. It's incredible. People ask how reliable they are. We do have zero failures. So... <laughs> 100% reliable? I don't know. I mean, this trans already had 140,000 on it before it was installed in this thing. Uh, it's we've never the trannies outlast the motors, so don't worry about that. I would say put the ADE in if you want overdrive. Obviously, if you don't know what to do, just put the ADE in. Get overdrive. Buy the Circle D budget converter if you have no idea what else you want to do. It's fine for 500 horsepower. It works really good. You'll be happy with it. I wrote here. People always. Ask about using the stock one. Sure, you can use the stock one. You're not going to break it, but you're probably going to be upset with it. You're probably going to be like, uh, I can't foot brake. No shit. It's a stock converter. That's what you bought. It's okay to use it and then get the converter later. If you have the stock converter, just use it and wait. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can buy like a Yank or a Jake's. If you eventually want to go retarded, like make a 1,000 horsepower later down the road, you may just want to buy the $1,100 converter from jake or circle d just get it and put it in it's not going to hurt you but i'm assuming that if you have no idea what you want to buy and you're doing a budget 500 horsepower build you're not going to want an 1100 dollars converter it's probably going to be the most expensive thing you install anyway if you can't fit an ade you should probably put a th400 in or if it's a race car and all you're going to do is race it or all you're going to do is short local drives a th400 might be acceptable i mean you have to make that decision if your friends all have TH400s, you have shit laying around, you could have one in your garage, that's good too. But you should get a decent converter for it, or you're going to hate it. Or if all you're, seriously, all you're going to do is burnouts, because this is what happens. People are like, hey, it'll be fine, I'll be fine, I'll just do burnouts. And then they take it to the track and the converter snowmobiles, and they're like, shit, my converter's no good. Well, yeah, I mean, your converter is no good, so maybe you should have bought a PTC. If you're going to race it all and you're going to be fucking disappointment city, you should just put the PTC in. So that's, again, that's my recommendation. And any 300 gear you have, just put that in. If you have no fucking clue, put that in. You have to weigh in at the end of that if you kind of know what you're doing. If you have a TH400 and you want to drive it decent distances, you should consider a low 300 gear or a tall tire. So <laughs> you're not screaming all the time because you don't have overdrive. Obviously, with an ADE, you can do ridiculous shit. Like, I have 373s. And a 26 inch tire now and it's really not bad at all it drives 70 80 miles an hour on the highway because i have overdrive and lockup so that's all stuff you know you have to take into account just go through all of that let me know what you guys think about this and the really cool thing is after mark mark's putting the race car back together with billet crank and rods and we're doing some other stuff and he's gonna race at lights out with the camaro so we're gonna get video and everything of that so once that's done, we're going to start ordering this stuff, and then re literally we're going to do, we're going to try anyway. We're going to try to do a weekend bender where we install all of this stuff in a weekend, and we show it, and you know, we try to blow through it as fast as possible. And I believe Mark's truck is a 07, so we're going to need to do something with the return fuel. 
either run lines or run run regulator on top of the gas tank or we're going to figure it out and do it ahead of time and let you know and we're going to show all the parts and what we paid slam it all in fire it up take it to the dyno and uh, tune it and show how much power it's making at what pound of boost and if we fail totally at that that's that's a good result and if we do really well uh, I mean we do this all the time so it's, it's funny though when you go to show somebody mom look I'm making a, I'm scoring a basket and then it, you can't fucking shoot at all anyway that is the for early 17 my best recommendations if you don't know what to get because the 7875 will easily pump out 500 tire and more if you want it not a whole lot more but it's a good middleweight turbo in my opinion physically small good horsepower characteristic that cam sounds good people fucking love it all of the above so that's just stuff that out of a lot of builds over the last year those people with that stuff are the happiest the first time around so that's what you should do too anyway let me know what you think about this for now we might change this stuff in the summer if people want more information go for it ask some questions that's fine uh, i will try to get an update with mark's truck i know we dynoed it i put up video of that we tuned it and we'll go from there and we'll show how much more power it's making from stock, blah, 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 blah. But obviously there's a lot of interest in this stuff, so that's it for now.